Perfect. Great. Well, welcome everyone. This is Leslie Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Today we have Heather with us, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss graduate. As always, I love to bring on clients um, that have graduated the program because I just really know that, you know, sometimes hearing just the story from me does not make as big of a difference to when we actually hear the story from someone else who you might in particular resonate with based on Heather's past, her story, right? Because the truth is everyone has an absolutely unique story that brings them to the hypnosis for permanent weight loss program and to having that struggle with dieting and exercising and constantly worrying about that all the time. So Heather, thank you so much for being here and being willing to share your story. Really appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Yeah, perfect. Great. So maybe starting out just like where you live and what you do and, um, yeah, maybe showing off a little bit on who you are as far as accomplishments go, and then getting into the backstory of what led you to hypnosis for permanent weight loss. Okay, so I'm Heather. I live in Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, my career is one of a few things. Um, my full-time daytime job is talent development and human resources. So I always joke, it's my job to make sure you enjoy coming to work. Mm -hmm. So I can never have a bad day because it's my job to make sure nobody does. Yeah. And, and I just want to pause for one second, because that's huge of what you're saying. Right. And I see this all the time. And I've talked about this, as you probably remember in the program of how our biggest strength or the thing that we are best at giving out is so often what we ourselves need the most. So here Heather is making sure that everyone's happy at work. Right. And she's so great at it. I almost said, badass. <laughs> but I guess I just said, it. <laughs> I just know that just based on who Heather is. Right. But then, you know, that is often what happens subconsciously is like, we are the ones that need to feel happy the most. I equate that to very similar to a car mechanic. They're all day long. They fix vehicles. And then when they get home, that's the least, you know, the last thing they want to work on is their own vehicle. So it's mm. my job all day to fix and help people. It's the last thing I want to do when I come home is help myself. Exactly. So anyone listening, right? If you're like the one who's like the most loving to everyone else in the family, or you're always there for everyone else and you're always right. I see this all the time with our clients. Just maybe think about it. Like, is it possible that that's what I need the most? Really good. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah so tell awesome. us more about that part of with the, your own making yourself happy every day at work or just in general. Tell me, you want me to tell you about what I do at work or me in my particular myself? Yeah, I think getting into like what we were talking about as far as, you know, always trying to make other people happy at work versus, yeah, you're, you yourself making yourself happy. So prior to this, I don't think that I did <laughs> or mm -hmm. I thought that I did. Everybody thinks they do. Everybody's like, oh, I have my own level of, of self-care. You know, I have drinks with the girls and I take naps and I purchase whatever outfit I want to purchase but it's not really taking care of yourself you know not taking care of your inside of yourself it's okay well I'm going to go out with the girls and laugh and and that's amazing but the next day the issues that you still had are still there because so many times it's easier to process everybody else's things you know where I'm a, I always said before this I was an amazing deflector, you know? So I'm like, okay, I need to get together with my, my friends and I need to talk to them about this. And I would say, this is what I need to talk about. But then, you know, a little bit into it, I'm like, oh, so tell me about yourself. So, oh yeah, that's great. Let's, mm -hmm. let's focus on you. And, you know, I don't know if I ever fully processed, I was able to state, this is what is bothering me. But past that, I, I don't think I ever was able to process that. Yeah. So, you know, and people, I think, <clears throat> if I could interrupt for a second, because it's so powerful what you're saying, right? Around how we think that what we're doing is making us happy. And I can, I remembered, I had a flashback to myself of like those momentary flashes of happiness of like going out, having drinks, you laugh a lot, but then waking up the next day in that guilt and shame spiral. Like, why did I eat that? Why did I drink that? Blah, blah, blah. Like, just, is that the world that you were living in? It's as far as why did I drink that short because you, you wake up with a hangover but um why did I eat that you know it was always I think I in my introduction interview with you guys it was how long 
have you been on a diet? I'm like, I was birthed on a diet. You know, Mm -hmm. I came out and it was like, well, girl, you're looking a little chunky, go on a diet. And so every day of my life, I've been on a diet. So you go out with your friends and you enjoy that, or you want to go out with your spouse and, and have a good dinner. And then you beat yourself up the next day because you're like, damn it. Why did I do that? Now I have to start this stupid low carb cycle all over again. Mm. So absolutely. And Mm. I would make my stomach hurt and, and I would beat myself up about it. And then I'm like, I got to do this. And every time I fell off, it was just self torture. You know, it was Mm. like a whole process of anger at yourself. Yeah. I used to call it OOS. And I'd be like, I'm just OOS today, which meant out of sorts. And it was just like, I was in this (laughs) vortex of just kind of feeling really not good. And it was like, before I realized that my thoughts were the things that were causing me to feel that way, it just felt like something that was out of my control. And then, you know, you're like, make the commitments. At least this is my path of like, I'm never going to do this again, or I'm starting that diet today. Like not going to have that hangover again or whatever. And then it's the weekend again, you get that phone call from the friends and there you are back again, doing the same thing again and again and again. And it feels awful. It feels like, you know, the definition of crazy is repeating the same thing without changing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was every single Sunday night, you know, my stomach was killing me. I was feeling like garbage and like, I got, I've got to get on this track. This week is my week to fix this. And then Thursday would come and, and, you know, you've had a long day, a long week and it's let's, let's go out to dinner. I don't want to deal with this. And, oh, I don't want to drink, you know, a captain diet Coke. I want to drink a really great craft beer. And then it's like, fine, I'll, I'll let myself do it this time. But, and then Sunday night, damn it. Why did I do this? Mm -hmm. And it's maddening, you know, 52 Mm -hmm. weeks out of the year, you're doing this. And every Monday, it's like, this week's, this week's different. This week's different. No week is different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 100%. And it makes me wonder, Heather, like how many people on this planet are in that exact cycle, right? Because now that I have gotten over this thing and, you know, for a while, you know, I did all the past of like completely isolating myself. So I would never have to experience that struggle, whatever. So then I met my weight loss goal, but then every time that I would go outside of these super strict parameters, it was the same thing. And the common denominator was myself beating myself up and not having any mental freedom or the ability to create that inner peace within myself. And for anyone listening who's in that painful spiral, just to be aware that you can get out of that because today, you know, I'm able to go out and have drinks or whatever, but there is absolutely no torture cycle whatsoever. Every day is a great day, but it is the result of my doing the exact same work that I give to my clients every day. So there is hope in that respect. I also wanted to say, Heather, you brought up something really interesting because you would go, you had the intention of like, great, going out with my girls. This is what I have to talk about. You'd start talking about it. And it sounds like you'd get almost right down in there of like what the core is, or maybe you're about to cry or, or something like that. And then immediate deflection back over into the other person. And so I'm curious, what do you think that was about? Um, I don't know. Like, I think I've learned through this process like I always would say surface people are annoying and they're you know it's so awful not to have friends that know you to the core and just smile and you're just this facade and I certainly have friends that definitely know me to the core but 98 percent of the people I talk to think of me as this most amazing and happy person So it's hard sometimes when you're with those friends that you can get deep into to get out of that. Oh, but you know what? I'm so happy about this. And oh my gosh, tell me about yourself. And it's, it's very hard. It's a coping mechanism. You know, I don't want to talk about this. And certainly I've had times where I've I've cried my eyes out and, you know, snots coming out your nose, Mm -hmm. but at the end of it, I'm like, let's talk about you. How's it going? And And, you know, they would, my friends always say, well, what's your process next? And I'm like, I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what my process next is probably reinventing this wheel and next week crying to you about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then making a joke about it because humor 
humor is also a coping mechanism of mine. Be funny, ask people how they are, and nobody's ever going to know you're a disaster. Mm -hmm. 100% absolutely and I think that all the time I have calls with people all the time and they'll be like oh yeah I've been dealing with this weight thing for blah 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 like it always keeps out ha ha." you know no judgment the fact that they're laughing but I'll say to them like yeah you're laughing but it doesn't really sound like it's that funny you know and then immediately they'll almost always say you're right it's not funny at all you know and it's just like outside of that laughter and that comic relief it's like there's so much pain inside And so I'm curious, like when it comes to that pain inside, because obviously you were doing the best that you could, you know, to like have your girls night and like have the intentions and like spill your guts out and your snot out and all the things. But then as far as like knowing what to do with that, it doesn't really sound like you had that. And at the same time, I also think about how sometimes we just all need a really good cry and then it's like good enough to stay on track. So I'm curious what your thoughts are were around that I think after this program I realized I thought that I wasn't deserving or worthy of moving past it Mm. there was a reason I was stuck in the shit that I was stuck in and I felt this was the consequences of past actions you know like Mm. you're if you think about tons of things you know specifically weight loss I'm fat because because I can't get my own self together and and you know it this is your you sit in your own stuff you know you made your bed now lie in it you ate that food now lie in it so I never felt that I deserved to move past that Mm -hmm. mess Mm -hmm. and I don't know I and I guess I never realized that and there's so many things since this program where I, there's things that I want to say that I couldn't say. And I realized I didn't say them because I felt I didn't deserve the input that I wanted. Like I automatically assumed the input I was going to get was going to be like, Heather, you, you know, you're too fat for that, or nobody loves you or, you know, silly things like that. You don't deserve all the stuff that you worked hard for. So don't even ask for it because you know you don't deserve it so then it makes you sad and cry and eat and you're on you're in your own head you can't get out of your own way is the absolutely. is the issue 100 percent, absolutely it's that vicious cycle it's like I don't deserve to have what I want then like something kicks up and you're like okay I'm gonna go out there and get what I want and then you go out there and try to get what you want but then what's there when you go out there and you know do your best effort is the thing again of i'm not worthy or deserving of having what i want like let me show you how i'm going to continue to be let down by these people right. in my life they're still not going to be able to see me they're not going to be able to support me they're not going to be right and it's so easy to put the the fingers out on other people but in reality it's our subconscious that has these messages and we all have them right really appreciating how they're sharing hers but it's not unique, right? Unworthy, undeserving, don't have permission, right? Can't do it. You know, I was just speaking to a woman the other day and over and over again, she's just like, I just don't think that I can, like, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. It's like, how long have you been believing that you can't, right? Because just that belief that you can't or you're unworthy or undeserving is always going to keep you in that painful, vicious cycle, cycle and spiral. And so go ahead. I was going to say, you made up a good point. So you were saying, you know, the people around you, you know, you feel that they let you down, but really when you step back, the only person that's letting yourself down is yourself. Mm. So if other people are letting you down around you, then those people are no longer bringing you joy, no longer serving you. I said, I know that sounds insane, but they're no longer your people. Mm. So get out of your own way and get rid of the people that aren't your people. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. Your environment is super important. And, you know, as easy as it is to say, like, you know, you're the only one who's getting in the way of yourself when we're in that, that vicious cycle, we can't see that. Right. Right. So for anyone listening, right. Could you see that before you started doing this work of the fact that you had these subconscious beliefs about yourself that were creating this? No, no. Oh, right? So many times, yeah. yeah, I would be like, they're, they're such an asshole. Mm-hmm. Really? They're not. I, I 
projected my own truth. I wrote my own truth of that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, afterwards I'm like, oh, well, well that's on me. So. Yeah. And it's so innocent, right? Like it always comes from our past of somehow we got a message that we're not as worthy to be taken care of as others. And then what we do, like we started the conversation with is like, we go out there and we are like the best caretaker of everyone else in the world. But again, when it comes to that, so, you know, we, you can't know what you don't know. So um, for every, anybody listening, you know, that this is like kind of ringing a bell with, and it's like, it's, it's so, and Heather, I know that we worked on this with you as well, of like how quick you were to beat yourself up. Like you'd like realize what you were doing. And then you'd be like, why am I doing that? I'm so stupid. And that's the battle back and forth, right. That can keep us stuck, but it's like, it's innocent, right? We all have unconscious patterns that we do, right? And the, our job is to remove the judgments and the, you know, inner, you know, why are you doing that kind of talk and just right. be with that pattern, that cycle, and then be able to reprogram yourself to starting to believe that, Hey, what if I am worthy of having people take care of me? Like, what if I was actually able to receive support from these people who And then it can sometimes open our eyes. So rather than like, sometimes the answer is change the people that you're hanging out with, if it really isn't serving you. But sometimes when this pattern becomes, you become aware of it in your own self, then all of a sudden the people around you, you're like, they've been trying to help me for 20 years or whatever. I just have been in the way and I can't receive it because I don't think I'm worthy of that. Right. And that's, that's a great point because I used to think, you know, and, and my husband will joke about this, like the amount of times in my head, I would be like, you're such a jerk for not helping me with this or, you know, and then we call it in our house building a casserole. So where one piece of data goes in and you get a little irritated about it. And then another one, you get a little irritated till you grow this massive casserole and it it blows up in the oven. Mm. So our house has always said, you know, mom, mom's cooking a casserole. So my house inadvertently knew I was doing this. And so after, you know, he's like, I can help you. I can help you to the point where I was like, you can't, you won't help me. You can't help me. Mm. And then after like retraining myself, I'm like, can't, can you do this for me? And he's like, I've been, I've been here the whole time, you know, Mm. at telling you, I'll help you. You just won't let me. Mm. And he keeps, you know, and I've, consciously noticed that the last three months or so him saying well you need help but you're not going to let me help you Mm. and then I'm like I stop and I'm like can you help me with this and he's like absolutely I'm like okay wow yeah that's a perfect example for what we're talking about it's like we don't and it's you know your whole house is like trying to help mom but like the thing is is like we can't get out of the way of this, like, but I'm unworthy of being helped. So it's like, we can't receive that. So I love that you took the actions, you became aware of it. You started to see your husband as this willing participant to help you. And then stepping out of your comfort zone to be like, let me see if this can actually happen. Right, right. It's that mindset. You know, all of us say, nope, I've got this. You know, in a household, there's, there's always one person that's like, I've got it. The dishes need to be done. I've got it. And to the point where you've now enabled everybody to be like, well, mom, mom's got it. So to realize I'm, I'm the issue right now of Mm -hmm. saying, I've got this, that, you know, as soon as I said, okay, Molly, my daughter, you need to do the dishes. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, was that easy? (laughs) Yes. You start to see that everyone around you is just waiting for you to open that door for them to be able to help you, especially with how much you're always right there to help other people. And that's the transformation. So how has that been for you of practicing receiving? It feels weird sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, it feels like in the beginning I had to get out of my head that I was being lazy. You know, if, if my daughter was doing this or my husband did this, and I'm like, actually, I probably could have found time in my day to do that. And mm-hmm. now I'm retraining myself to constantly every day to remember just because I have time to do that doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't have extra time to do it as well. So mm-hmm. it's, I love that's, that. 
yeah that's a constant I need help just to say it and it feels so weird like in your head you Mm -hmm. had said something earlier where you know that mind the constant wheel in our head where we're we're self we keep thinking we need to say something or do something yet we never do it because we're too scared to do it but the millisecond that comes out of your mouth I need help is that the biggest relief that I can't even explain like that oh like floodgates open and you're like well I need help with this and this and this and this yeah. you're like oh now I have all this mental space to, to to what focus on myself to relax so what you're it, saying it, is so much gold I always say to people like your miracle mouth you know like just one <laughs> little hint of I need help you know it could be the scariest thing to think about doing that one thing and then like you're saying it opens up all the floodgates it's like oh it was that easy but it feels right. terrifying because to the part of you and your subconscious that says I'm not worthy of this worst case scenario to that part is you won't get that help and it'll prove right. to that part of you that see I am completely unworthy and undeserving of receiving that and therefore my existence as a human being might as well be completely demolished off the face of the planet right it's bizarre but it's literally it's that end. much of a survival yeah and so yeah to be able so how did the coaching within the program support you with feeling comfortable enough to to take that step so it was weird because I'm a very I think we talked about in the beginning of my coaching and through my life everybody talks to me about this I have these beautiful walls I build when something makes me uncomfortable I build these walls and uh, an amazing boss I had once said during, I was talked to you about all the trauma we've had in our family over the last couple of years, that during the middle of it, he's like, Heather, you have these beautiful walls. Even he knew it and I never talked to him about it. He's like, I can start to see little cracks in those walls. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's like my strength is crumbling, which really it wasn't. It was me expressing I needed help. But so I have these walls that I build up, but from day one of, of your program I had zero walls in your program and I don't know why because I love walls or I loved walls they're they're my best friend you know they're my my security blanket but from day one you know it was like Heather how are you and I'm like lose it you know (laughs) hyperventilate (laughs) and so that's why I went earlier when we were talking, I said, I don't think I've ever seen you with makeup or my hair done because it's always been sobbing. Um, but it was just, I felt comfort. It felt like a safe place. It felt like this is my moment. I have to do this. Mm. So it, 100%. It was, I think something support, happened. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say all the support from day one. Just, it just felt right. It felt good. That's awesome. That's really beautiful to see. And yeah, I think something energetically happens. We get to, you know, the end of our rope, you know, when we make that decision to enter ourselves into this place, you know, we draw that line in the sand and we walk over that line and you were awesome as far as like, I'm diving all the way in here, you know, like if I'm going to do this, we are doing this and your walls came down. And like I always said to you from the beginning, you got the results as fast as you did because you know, some people it's like, takes a little slower and we support that too. But like, I'm like you, where it's like, rip the whole bandaid off in one foul swoop. Like we're going in for this and seeing how it goes. And, you know, so yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, the walls talking again about the subconscious is like our body becomes part of that wall. Like we get bigger to like subconsciously keep the space away from us as well. Mm -hmm. And which I think is interesting. And then the other thing. And so as you're letting down the walls, it's like, that's how the weight can start to shed because it's like, oh, now I'm allowing for support. I'm starting to realize I'm worthy and deserving. Like I don't have to build these walls and therefore I don't get so stressed that I'm in eating way over the top or whatever. Um, so yeah. How is your experience like with this stuff and then you're eating? So as far as like one from when I realized I never had to, never had to technically go on a diet again that was insane to me like I was like what do you mean you know I couldn't I've been on a diet my entire life you're telling me I can eat whatever I want to and yes eat whatever you want to and I'm like this is really this this is odd 
but somehow it clicked to me. Like I knew this is what I was going to do. It was going to work. But as far as my eating goes, you know, I would always get that, like I said, that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Sunday would just be like, I just need to eat everything I, I need to eat because I'm going to go on a diet Monday. I no longer think about that at all. And then, so last Sunday was Mother's Day. We went out to lunch for Mother's Day and I didn't finish my meal because I didn't feel the need to finish my meal. Mm -hmm. And my daughter got ice cream and cookies or something. And my husband's like, do you want some too? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't need that. And traditionally I would be like, absolutely. I need that. And then once we get back from our hour and a half drive home, can we go to the ice cream store and get more ice cream? But it just isn't something that's important to me anymore. And I've noticed that when I'm out with my friends or out with family, where before I'd be like, I have to eat all of this. Now I notice myself pushing it away, you know, cause I'm like this, why am I eating all of this? It's delicious, but I can have it again tomorrow if I want to. Yes. And but it was also emotional eating. So I think I talked to you about, I had made homemade mac and cheese for the first time during mm-hmm. this program and I was enjoying it. And I got a phone call that I knew was gonna irritate me. Mm-hmm. So I found myself consciously putting more macaroni and cheese on my plate and walking out of the room and eating it. And then I, in the middle of it, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I didn't mm-hmm. need that. So it helps you recognize those triggers where, you know, it's like, I've had a really awful day, screwed, I'm going to eat, you know, mac and cheese or mashed potatoes, or I'm going to eat this great roll, or I'm going to go to Wegmans, and I'm going to buy all the good things. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But now I don't see that I see it as food is food to eat, to, you know, fuel your body, not to, you know, comfort your, comfort your bad day. So good. Yeah. What I'm really yeah. hearing is just that comprehensive. It's like all things have to be firing, you know, at the same time, which we make sure that we're, you know, exposing all to like one, like realizing you're worthy and deserving of being taken care of Two, you know, letting down those barriers, asking for help, you know, three, feeling safe about your emotions Four, the hypnosis to slow down the mind, to increase your awareness, let go of detachment, you know, and then, you know, and then you know, five, six, seven, eight of just like rinse and repeat over and over again. And then you start seeing yourself in day to day of being like, oh, I actually don't feel like I need to have that, which is amazing. Something I wanted to go back to that I thought was awesome, Heather, an opportunity is you were talking about like the, I got it, I got it, I got it. And, you know, in the, you know, typical man's world of work these days, right. It's like being in the masculine of like, I'll, I'll take care of it. Like I got this, like this, like I see this all the time with our clients is that they're so successful at work because of their habits of, I got it. I got it. I can take on more. I can do this. Da, 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 da. And it's great. But then, you know, this is what happens. And what I see is that the, the opportunity of getting more into our feminine right? Feminine energy is like sitting back, receiving, relaxing, like being the space and the presence for the family, right? And so, um, yeah, just wanted to acknowledge the fact that like, it's so beautiful that you now get to receive that from your husband, the support from your, from Molly, right? And, and it is strange, kind of what you're pointing to of like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Like, just sit back and relax. It's like, yes, Yes. What if the answer is yes? I meant to tell you. So I talked to you a while ago about, you know, the proof of this working or not working is if I felt like I needed to do more once we ended. And the fact that I'm saying, no, I'm good is really proof that this actually worked because Mm. a great thing for me was always being busy. Like I need to be busy. I need to, I mean, I have my full-time job and I have three part-time jobs. And I had said to you last week, I'm ending one of the part-time jobs and my car just shut off and, um, and I have nothing planned for the evening and I'm going to keep it that way. And that's proof that, that I'm good. Cause if I said to you, absolutely, I want to do this, 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 and this and take on another job, um, that would be me 
proof that I did not fix myself. But I want to say yesterday, something happened with one of my part-time jobs that I just said out loud, this is no longer serving me. I'm not doing this anymore. And I said to a friend of mine, I'm, I'm quitting teaching after this semester. And they said, what? Mm. I said, I'm, I'm not doing that. It's not serving me anymore. It's, it's too much for me. And I was like, holy crap. Wow. Like I never did it for the money. I never did it for anything other than to keep my mind mentally busy. And that was amazing to me. And they're like, well, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm going to do something for myself. I don't know. Just relax. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think also there could have been a part of you that was signing up for all those jobs to try to prove your worthiness or deservingness? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Like what, what can I do to prove to myself that I'm worthy? Obviously Mm. I don't think there was ever a limit to that because I continue. was like, okay, that's great, but that's not good enough. Okay. That's great. That's not good enough. Mm -hmm. And people used to ask me what I did before HR. And I'm like, oh, well, I ran an airport. And they're like, hold on a second. Wait, what? You ran an airport? And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Let's move on. Because even that felt like that wasn't worthy enough for me. Mm -hmm. And which is such a cool career, but I would never take in and be like, that actually is a cool career. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But I would just be like, okay, let's move on and on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. On to the next thing. Like I conquered that. What else can I conquer? What else can I conquer? And I constantly these levels of, of plateaus of stress, you know, okay, well, I've maxed out on this stress level. Let me go up here and let me go up here to the point where nothing. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't keep track of my own self. And that's what we'll do. We'll subconsciously keep trying to get from external sources that which we Mm -hmm. need to get from within ourselves. So I absolutely love to hear this and congratulations on just, I love how it's just kind of like automatically coming out of your mouth of like, this isn't serving me anymore. I'm going to leave that. Like, it's like our life can get so much, you know, simpler when we actually are addressing, you know, the stuff that's going on on the inside. And, you know, relating to also the, you know, just to keep my mind, I really get that. And and it's like to avoid the pain of like having to face, like if I'm doing nothing, then maybe it really means that I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy. When in reality, it's like, we are all infinitely worthy and deserving of having anything, right? Our heart is beating the same as everyone else's. Our lungs are breathing the same as anyone else's. I always talk about how, you know, when, when we're babies or if you have children, which I know you do, Heather, of like, when you look down at them, it's like, they can do no wrong. Like they are perfection as a baby. And we forget as adults that we are that. And then all of these things from the outside will, you know, we, of course, our, our actions could be imperfect. Our behaviors can be imperfect, but it doesn't change the perfection that's within. And this work is about uncovering and peeling back the layers to help you remember that right Right, on that very real level. And for myself, as far as the distraction goes for the same thing, like I would sign up for programs that would be at nighttime to prevent me from binging and eating at nighttime. Like I'd be like, Oh, I need something from seven to 10 PM, like fill up my calendar ASAP because otherwise I'm going to be eating. And so into now, because of doing this work, it's like, any evening off, like there is not even a hinge of that being a concern because I give myself unconditional permission to have what I want when I want. So it's like, there's no difference in like the Oreos at from seven to 10 PM tonight as they were at 7 AM this morning. I could have had it then too. (laughs) And now you can just eat them when you want to. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that was a, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say this program is so much more I instantly realized from day one yes I need hypnosis for permanent weight loss but I need hypnosis for permanent workaholic permanent Mm. you know not self-worth and like the amount of and I think I talked about it the amount of medicine I had taken because I wasn't feeling good right to now I'm down to one pill a day instead of seven Wow. To be like, I kept going to the doctor and be like, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. One, you don't feel good because you're self sabotaging yourself with food. Two, you don't feel good because all that stress is you're internalizing. And 
it's weird. Like my cabinet is full of Tylenol PM so I can go to sleep that I haven't used in an eternity and, and all this other stuff to make myself function and process through this day. But I'm like, oh, I don't need any of that. I just need to fix myself. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Lisa, who was on our team, she's offering anxiety meds. She thought she was going to have to be on them for absolutely forever, you know, and it really just comes back to this, you know, breaking through that pattern and that spiral. And what you're talking about is huge. I mean, that's the stuff that leads people to like heart attacks later. Like how long mm -hmm. can you bear that pain and like hold on to that burden? And it's like, probably not forever, you know, and i talk about right. this all the time about how, when I was working as a nurse, it's like, we got to get to these people way faster before they end up in the ICU, you know? And so that's, right. that's why we're here. That's why we're talking today because, and I really appreciate you sharing that part of your story. Cause I know there are so many people that are loading up on things all day, every day to just make it through, to lessen the pain. And it's not their fault for anyone listening. It's not your fault at all. And you can get past it. And, you know, do yourself the favor of, you know, just finding out if that's going to be the avenue for you. What would you say to anybody who's resonating, Heather? You know, specifically for me, like my, I physically, I was in pain to the point where I felt like I couldn't function normally. There was a time before I, right before I started with you that my husband said, I don't want you to cook dinner anymore. Like it takes everything for you to get through the day. And I would go to the doctor and I spent so much money on why do I not feel good? Why do I not feel good? To realize that it was myself. And you know, obviously there are legitimate things for why people are in pain, but maybe take a moment and step back and be like, okay, for me, it was my hip and my stomach. Like my stomach was, it would put me down for the count and my hip as well. Realizing one, all of my stress and anxiety and eating issues was in my stomach. Mm -hmm. So every stomach issue I have or had is completely gone. And my hip wow. was the simplest thing was like stretching. And so mm -hmm. for my hip where I couldn't walk, you know, there's faith out there. There's, there's stuff out there to do that. You don't need to keep going to the doctor saying, you know, something's wrong with me. And, and I think I told you this in the beginning, I felt so awful. I knew I had cancer. And I was like, I know I have cancer. I know something's wrong with me. They just can't find it. You know, my mom died of pancreatic cancer that nobody ever caught till the very end. And I'm like, this is it. This is my moment. I'm just like, my mom, I'm going to die. And it was myself. It was honestly my own head and my own mental stress of crap and garbage and food. And wow. it, it, for me, it was more than food. It was it was everything. And I think I've told you that from the beginning, like day one, I'm like, Oh, I get the food part. Now let's fix myself part. And wow. yeah. Wow. And poor Hannah kept telling me, stop being an overachiever, <laughs> just, <laughs> just relax and enjoy the ride. So, Aww. but really I thought I had cancer. I thought I knew it mm -hmm. in my head. I'm mm -hmm. like, there's going to be a moment where they're going to find it. Mm -hmm. And, and that's it. I, and I couldn't understand, you know, every test was like you're fine you're fine you're fine and I'm like yes something's wrong with me yeah, I know in my husband yeah it can start making you feel like wrong yeah it can start making you feel like you're a crazy person because like there is actually something wrong you know and you do actually have this pain you know but then every doctor is like I don't know like go home you don't have anything like you know, yeah. and again, it's that, you know, for people who are listening, it's like, you're not crazy. Like you do actually know that something's up, you know? And again, if this conversation is resonating, then maybe it's the inner stuff, you know, that world I can relate completely. I had like this and I had patients who would, well, first myself, I had this back pain. It was chronic. It was really bad, you know? And like, you're trying to, they gave me muscle relaxers. that would just knock me completely. I was like, okay, that doesn't work for me. I'm too sensitive for it. Right. But it was like, what is it? But then it was, it was the same thing you're talking about. It was just stretching, you know, that was like, okay. And then I'd see these patients in the hospital who are in for back pain and they're getting these heavy narcotics for this back pain, which doesn't touch muscular, you know, tightness right. or whatever. And so like, it's like, oh my God, nobody's told this poor guy to stretch. Like this is literally like he couldn't bend down and touch his toes because he's always sitting down all the time. And now he's in, you know, and it's like, it's not your fault. Like, it's just a lack of education or awareness of what's actually going on. So 
again, thank you so much for sharing that. And wow, your stomach, so your stomach doesn't hurt at all anymore. No. So I used to take tons of medicine for my stomach and it, it it was bad. Like the second I would eat something, I could feel it. The second stress would come on, I would feel it. It's my, to the point I wouldn't go to the bathroom for, for weeks. And my, we always joke that, and it's probably way too much, but people out there might feel it. Like I always joke. I only farted once a quarter (laughs) because, you know, it's so tight and so compacted, you know, you're so tense all the time that instantly went into my stomach and you know every time I ate I would get sicker and sicker and sicker and then you would do the low carb thing and then your body would be like what are we doing today number one you're stressed out to the maximum and now you're not eating carbs but you are eating carbs then you're drinking craft beer and now you're not drinking what are we doing Mm -hmm. that it was confused Mm -hmm. (laughs) so first week on your program you know I was like oh I can actually eat what I want and all that stress just lifted like a, it, it was, you know, that heavy wet blanket started to come off and you could see it and feel it in my stomach where one day I woke up and I'm like, holy shit, my stomach doesn't hurt. And I'm like, oh, and then someone's like, your hamstrings are really tight. Why don't you stretch them out? A couple of days after that, I'm like, oh my, I'm a new person. Wow. It's yeah. amazing. Oh my gosh. I hear everything that you're saying. Yeah. And it's like, we hold so much stress in the stomach. And I firmly believe that we can actually will ourselves to have cancer or disease and things manifest in the body without knowing it. You know, it's like a subconscious thing of like, because that stress is so much, you know? Right. So it's just, again, why I'm always waving this flag over here because I'm like, you will, you know, you could manifest cancer if you don't, you know, work on this, but it's actually not what you think. It's not physical it starts with sometimes the mental and emotional right I might have to go back and apologize to all my doctors because I'm like you're all idiots <laughs> and I'm not going to the pain clinic you just haven't found what's right. wrong with me and really I was wrong with me wow 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 Heather oh my gosh thank you so much I'm so happy for the progress that you've made congratulations thanks for sharing your story I know it's making a huge difference for people listening and yeah, if you had one final message to give to our audience today, what would that be? I would say there's hope out there mm-hmm. and there's a moment in your life when you need to realize that this is your moment to invest in yourself. And, you know, there's hope, there's people out there that feel just like you. And just because nobody in your circle is talking about it doesn't mean they're not in the same boat. And, you know, advocate for yourself and, and, and sign up. <laughs> it's a life-changing moment. It's a life-changing journey. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And if anybody's ready to have that conversation and change and have that moment for yourself, uh, you can text the word hypnosis to seven twenty seven twenty seven and book a call with us and we'll get back to you really soon. Heather, thank you again so much. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Enjoy your day. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, Heather. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.